Hey everyone, Dave at Tombstone Tech, and in this video I have a cheap creep for you. It is the artificial candle. Now, I'm kind of brightly lit here for video purposes, but uh, what this looks like in better lighting is like this. And that is a shot of this actual candle. So these are super simple to make, super cheap to make, and you can make a lot of them and uh, it's kind of fun. So let's get started. What do you need? Well, you are going to need a hot glue gun and you're going to need to go to the craft store and get some of these little tea light candles. These things are, are pretty cheap and you can get them at like uh, uh, Michael's or Joanne Fabrics or something like that. And you've seen these things. They just, you know, they have a little uh, button battery in it and they look like that. It's a, not a bad uh, flickering flame effect. And then the other thing that you will need is one of these. Now this you can get at the big box uh, hardware store like whoops, like Home Depot or something like that. These are plastic tubes that go over fluorescent lights to protect them. Um, they're made out of, I think they're made out of polypropylene, I'm not sure, but it's a, it's a durable plastic, uh, pretty easy stuff to work with. And it just so happens that these tubes are just big enough to accommodate uh, one of these uh, little battery operated tea lights. You also need um, some spray paint. Now this is what I used. Um, use a, a good quality spray paint. Get something that is meant to stick to plastic. Uh, some people will tell you that you need to rough up the plastic with um, sandpaper or something so that the paint will stick with that. I haven't had to do that. If you want to do it, go ahead. But if you have a, uh, a paint that is meant to specifically bond to plastic, uh, that should work well. Uh, do whatever color you want to do it in. I tend to use kind of a, a lighter color. This is, as you can see, this is sort of a cream color. Uh, do they have a name for this color? Um, no, they don't. But you'll want to use kind of a light color and uh, I'll show you why you want to do that. Now, this tubing, this, uh, this piece, I've cut it down to size a little bit, but this piece uh, start off as like, a, I think in a six or an eight foot long piece. They, they come in different lengths, but I tend to buy the longest one and then just cut it down as I need it, as I, as I need. Now you can cut this tubing to length with a box cutter. Uh, I actually used a um, actually used a, a jigsaw with a hacksaw blade in it. If you do use a saw, you want to use something with really fine teeth. But uh, you know you can poke into it with a uh, a box cutter and then kind of turn it around and cut it to length. Um, you know, in a pinch, you could cut it with scissors. I think. But what you want to do is you want to get this and you want to cut it down to whatever length you want your oops whatever length you want your candles to be uh i tend to go with this that's what is that i don't know eight nine inches something like that and you also don't have to worry too much about cutting the top so that it's absolutely flush and flat if it's a little uneven that's okay because it'll just look like um, the candle, you know, melted at the top a little unevenly. So anyhow, you're going to take your tubes that you've cut down until you have a bunch of stuff that kind of, sort of looks like this. And then you're going to want to paint them. As you can see in this video, I have them hung up on a, on a clothes rack that I use for hanging things to paint them. You can do it in one coat. Just make sure you get good coverage. Again, you probably want to use a little bit of a lighter color uh, because you're going to want the light of the uh, candle to shine through it. And you'll see what I mean shortly. Once you get everything cut and painted, you're going to end up with a bunch of tubes that look like this. So 
It's just painted on the outside. You keep the in, you keep as much paint as you can from going inside. Um, and when you make these, you probably want to make some sort of a little base for them if they're just going to be sitting or, you know, I forgot to put them in a candle stand. By the way, that's a real good time also for the hot glue gun because the hot glue sticks very well until you don't want it to and then you can pull it off. So if you have a, um, like a, a, a candle, like a wrought iron candlestick that you want to put these in, you can give it just a little tack glob of, of glue and it'll stay in there nicely until you want it to come out. So now the first thing that you want to do with your painted tube is you're going to put a little paint, uh, rather a little hot glue on the inside. And the reason for that, and I kept uh, one tube unpainted here so I could show you this, uh, these tea lights, I've never had one that was too big to go into the tube, but some of them fit more loosely than others. These actually fit fairly tight. Um, but what you want to do is when you put later, when you put the um, tea light inside the tube, you want it to sit I'll try to show you this. You want it to sit so that the candle flame is just below the top edge of the plastic. You don't want the flame sticking up because these flames, you know, they are kind of fake looking. I mean, if you want to have it stick out, that's fine. But I like to have it down here. And that way, when the candle is finished, you get that kind of glow through the top of the candle because the wick has burned down into the wax and to my eye that just looks better but you can have it above if you want i prefer to do them below below now <clears throat> first thing that you want to do with your painted tubes is you're going to have at them with the hot glue gun and the first thing that you want to do now i'm going to use this clear tube just to show you but generally you would want to do this after it's painted. What you want to do is you want to stick your glue gun in there about as far as it'll go and give it a squeeze like that and just make a little lump of glue right there like that. And uh, you let that dry and then, or you let it cool down anyhow and then what you might do is just do the same thing directly opposite it on the other side. Just a little, just a little blob of glue. Now what those two blobs of glue are going to do is it's going to give this candle a place to rest so it doesn't slide all the way down inside. Now if you uh, don't want to do that or you can't get your glue gun in there or for whatever or for whatever reason you don't want to do it with a couple of little drops of glue the other thing that you can do is um, you can stuff like a paper towel or aluminum foil anything for this little tea light to rest on because these things they don't weigh anything they weigh a few ounces so anything that will hold the tea light about where you want it that's what you want to do. In fact, if I hold it like that, you can kind of see if I shade my hand of it, you can kind of see the, uh, the uh, candlelight glowing through the wax. That's the effect I was talking about. So again, first thing you want to do is you want to create a couple little blobs for your glue to rest on. I'm going to do that with uh, this candle. So I'm just going to go in there as far as I can, give it a squeeze, take it out. You can look in there. You can kind of see that blob. Maybe you can, I don't know. Turn it over, do one on the other side, just quick squeeze. And then let those cure. While those are curing, you might want to hold the, um, the candle like that so they don't run you know, if you hold it up like this, it's going to run down the candle. So just kind of hold it like that. So if you've got your two globs on the inside, now what you want to do is kind of create a ring on the outside of 
the tube at the top. Now what this ring does is it gives a little thickness to that top edge. And just kind of go around like that. And let that cure. Try not to get it on the inside of the uh, tube because then it, it can get in the way of the tea light. And now take your glue gun and just make drips of wax. And like a lot of Halloween projects, one thing that's kind of nice about this one is that if you end up getting a paint run or this uh, hot glue that you're putting on the outside of this drips and, and runs a little bit, it's okay. It'll just look like it's part of the effect. Now, some people like to do it so that, you know, a lot of the runs down the candle are uniform. Uh, some people like to do it so that they are uh, all different. I, I, I tend to do the different lengths, but you just kind of go around the candle like that, making wax runs and you can really you can do this as much or as little as you like just do it until it looks good to you that's enough for this one so you do that and now you've been careful to not get the glue on the inside uh, I'm just checking those blobs of glue. The, the first ones that I put inside are still a little bit warm. So while they cool down, I'll just show you on this one. This one I put the glue globs in there. And now when you put the candle in there, see it just rests on those glue globs. Now when you make these, uh, they do tend to be a little bit top heavy. So um you might want to if you don't have it in a candelabra or you know in the hand of a skeleton or something like that uh you might make just like a little wooden base what i've done is i've taken uh you know a small piece of wood you know one by three or something like that cut it to a small square and then you put this on there and then you can just go around it with the glue gun and you know secure it to the base uh, one thing that's really nice about these candles is that they are very, very lightweight. So you can put them just about any place. Um, like if you want to do a Harry Potter thing and have them all floating up near the ceiling, you can do that. Uh, I know some people are probably thinking, you know, ah oh, man, you use those little battery operated tea lights. What a pain. You got to go turn them on and turn them off. That is true, and you can do this exact same technique and use a, uh, a wired LED that, uh, you know, an effect LED that has that flickering fire effect. You know, there's no reason why you can't hardwire these. Um, but I like to do this because this way I don't have wires running to all my candles and uh, I can put them, you know, just about any place that I want. Let's see how this is doing. Still a little warm, but I'm going to chance it. Just stick the candle right in there like that. And there it is. I'll put the two of them. But that's it. That's the artificial candle. Very cheap, very easy to do. You can make at least uh, a little more than a half dozen if you get one of those eight foot lengths of that uh, tubing. Um, but you can make a lot of these, they're really cheap. Uh, the tea lights, like I said, you can get these at uh, Joann's or Michael's or any other 
uh, craft store most of the time you can find those. Tube comes from the big box home improvement store. Uh, go to the lighting section where they have like fluorescent light uh, fixtures that go in a warehouse or whatever. Uh, you'll see them there. You'll know them when you see them. They're, they're big. They're hard to miss. And that's how you can do some candles for your hunt. So I hope you find that useful. Hey, if you make anything that I show you how to make, take a picture or a video and send it to me. I'd love to see it. And um, like that. Got some other interesting uh, cheap creeps coming up pretty soon. I know Halloween is almost upon us. On this channel, it's always almost upon us. But that is the artificial candle. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, please like and subscribe to the videos. Really do subscribe. It is It is free and it will help immensely in me continuing to make these videos. But artificial candle cheap creep. There you are. Thanks. See you on the next video. Thank you.